Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to talk about cowbells. I know, I know, enough of the jokes and the more cowbell shirts. If I ever meet Will Ferrell, I'm going to punch him. All right, so cowbells are an indispensable part of a percussionist arsenal. They're very common on drum set, all kinds of Latin setups. Uh, if you do any kind of show or symphony orchestra work, you're going to have to have several kinds of cowbells. So you see on this tray, I have a number of large cowbells, and that's where we'll start. We'll do each separate size in a separate clip, as well as the go-go bells, cowbell effects, cowbell pedals, and ways to strike cowbells uh, with your hand, with different devices, and with different kinds of beaters. So let's talk about some of these large bells. The most common large bell used is handheld. This is a salsa bell. All right. This particular one's made by LP. There's lots and lots of companies that make them. My favorite cowbells, uh, if you don't know this already and you haven't watched my Timbali videos, are the JCR cowbells. So the JCR cowbells uh, were made uh, in the Bronx uh, for several, well, several decades actually. And this is a JCR salsa bell. This one you can mount, all right? And this LP bell is notable because you cannot mount it easily. You can put it on a table and you can put it on some foam rubber, but it's not meant to be mounted. It's meant to be held, all right? And the way you play a salsa bell is with a very thick, short stick like this. You can also hold it like this. So there's different ways to hold it. You see the big sound difference there. I'm playing on the mouth of the bell. This is called the mouth, and this is called the body. So here's the difference. Body, mouth. The body tends to be more ringy, depending on the type of cabo you're playing. The mouth tends to be a little bit louder and a little more muffled, but open. So, mouth and bell, the body of the bell. Now on this JCR, tighten this up so it doesn't rattle. It's a completely different kind of bell, if you hear it. So the first thing you hear is the pitch. It's so much lower. All right, that's not always a good thing, so it's good to have separate bells. I use this particular bell uh, with my foot when I play uh, Latin gigs, and my right foot. So my left foot will be playing clave. My right foot might be playing. That or just like I just play just straight quarter notes is fine. All right, so uh, the JCR bells are all handmade, so they all sound completely different. And that's, it, it's like the old K Zildjian's. Um, so that's something to look out for if you're buying them used. Whereas these salsa bells, they are all exactly the same. To prove my point, I took out my original salsa bell that I used 40 years ago in New York to play gigs. And you see it looks like it's been through a war it's rusted, it's beaten, and it still sounds good. And here's a salsa bell, the same kind, that I got about a month ago, and it sounds exactly the same. Okay, so uh, it's just newer, it looks great, <laughs> uh, and it might not be as ringy because of all the rust. Now, there's nothing wrong with this kind of rust and decay. I think it looks pretty cool. I call it patina. Uh, you might wanna oil these up from time to time. Uh, you can use WD-40 or just regular machine oil. And, you know, to keep the rust at bay, you don't want it getting on your hand or your nice white shirt if you're playing a gig. Uh, you can also use very light steel wool or extremely fine 
sandpaper, like 400 grit, which is about the finest you can get. And you can get some of that rust off. I don't necessarily do that. I just oil them up. All right, so that's the difference. So any of these LP salsa bells will sound exactly the same. Next, we have the bongo bell, okay? So a bongo bell is called that because it's got the open mouth there. And sometimes a bongo player will play this instead of a salsa bell, so. It's low, it's fine to do that. Salsa bell is just a little bit higher and this one can be mounted. All right, so other people have other names for them, but this, when I was a kid, this was known as the bongo bell. They were just more round. A timbali bell, like this JCR, is flatter. And this one's much higher pitched. And again, it can be mounted. Now, if you watch my timbali videos, you would have remembered this bell setup. These are all JCRs and all the different uh, types of bells. So we had a timbali bell. I'm going to use a re regular stick. And then we had the cha-cha bell, which is one of our little bells. And then I also used uh, a salsa bell on my timbali setup. So, so I'd recommend going back and watching those timbali videos. You'll see these in action. And you'll see how I use the salsa bell, keeping time with my left hand. And with my right hand, I'll play on the timbali bell as well. Okay. So <clears throat> other versions of the timbali bell, sort of hybrids, which are uh, not as big a mouth, but a little bit flatter, are these Pearl uh, Horatio Hernandez bells. I like these a lot. Uh, my buddy Leo gave this one to me, and they come in many, many sizes. Well, not many, many. I think he told me five or six sizes. And so you can have pitch bells, like Amglocken. And by the way, there are pitched cowbells. Um, there's a famous symphony, uh, the Alpine Symphony, Strauss, that uses tuned cowbells. They're called Amglocken. And there's many, many of them. Now, uh, just a little history before we go on here. Uh, the reason it's called a cowbell is because they would put them around cows' necks to keep track of them. And that's the truth. So this is my oldest bell. I found this in an antique shop. It's really heavy. It's almost like cast iron. It sounds great. And there used to be a clapper in there. That's, uh, I don't know if you can see inside it there, probably not. But that was the device that was metal that when you did this, it actually made the bell roll. So if a, a cow or, you know, I have some friends uh, in the mountains who put these on their dog's necks so they can, you know, find them <laughs> if, if they're looking for them. So if you can uh, hear this, that would be what the clapper would sound like, but it would be metal. All right, so that's why it's called a cowbell. And in Cuba, uh, these are called sinceros, and they would use them literally to play the original forms of lots of grooves, you know, like mambo and cha-cha and Obviously, those are part of the genre, salsa, dance music. So in Africa, they would use multiple bells. We call them agogo go-go bells. Um, they're called gange. I believe that's the way to pronounce it. Uh, so that's sort of the original version of the agogo go bells that we'll be getting to. So that's sort of where the use of them came into being, uh, they just played them like a percussion instrument, you know. They were handy, uh, they were tough, they, they wouldn't break easily. And actually, while we're talking about breaking, I have two bells here that I have broken over the years. These are very old, and I played these each for about 25 years. One's an LP, one's a minor, and they both, after a while, they both broke. So I'll show you what a cow broken cowbell sounds like.
That's that one, and here's this one. And that's compared to uh, this. Probably not the best comparison, but uh, yeah, this is like this. So you hear when a cowbell breaks, it loses all its ring. It loses a lot of its volume. What happens is the welds fail. So these welds along the side here, they crack and come apart. Okay? Uh, they'll, they'll do that. If you play them long enough and hard enough, especially on a drum set, that'll happen eventually. I have not had that happen to a JCR bell ever. Uh, I have probably 20 of these things. The JCR bells, and I've never had a weld crack, so that just um, tells you about the um, manufacturer, the great quality of these things. So, if you can find the JCR bell, uh, they're no longer made. Cali passed away in 2017, um, so they closed down. He was the guy who owned the company and, and made all this this great stuff. If you can find one on YouTube, I'm not on YouTube, on a uh, eBay or Reverb or somewhere else. It's probably going to be pretty expensive, but you'll have it forever. Okay, even if it looks kind of rusty, that's fine. It's still going to sound great, but they all sound different. So maybe ask for a sound file uh, before, and they all look different too. There's all so many different sizes and types. Okay, so uh, while we're here with the large bells, I want to show you one more thing. I want to show you about mounting devices. So first of all, any cabo can be mounted on your bass drum if you're playing drum set by this device. It's a clamping device, and you see a rod comes up, and this is a little cha-cha bell, and, and then you just mount it on your bass drum. That's the easiest way to do it, okay? And I've used these mounts forever. The next best way is to use some sort of apparatus, any of the um, uh, hardware companies, Gibraltar, LP, make stuff, I mean, lots and lots of companies where you can, um, I don't know if you can see it here, I'll lift it up. You can see that cowbell sort of everything rack. It's a mini one where you can get two cowbells on there. And they clamp to stands, okay? So those, those are really good things to have for cowbells, wood blocks, all kinds of things. Then this is the kind of mounting rod you're probably going on to use. They also make different ones that are longer and, you know, they go farther this way and farther up. And then also they're straight ones. So you'll need a number of these to get them uh, in the right place on your kit. Also, that pearl I showed you before has a really ingenious hookup where you can hook this on something and just put the cowboy right in there. I love that. That's innovative. Okay? So these that's another reason why you might want to consider these bells. It makes it really easy to do. Also, we'll move this over so you can see it. Uh, when you're playing conga, and you want to play cowbell, there's ways to do that with your hand. Other than just trying to hit it like this, I mean, good luck with that. You're probably just going to hurt yourself and won't hear anything. So this is a really ingenious device that Minel makes, which is kind of a bass drum uh, plexiglass beater on a spring mount that clamps to a rod that actually makes it so you can hit the bell with your hand and get some sound. And I've used that quite often, okay? Uh, you see this cowboy right here, that's called, um, I think it's called a Ridge Rider because it has this plastic thing. And that's great to use with this because you won't, you know, break it and there's no contact noise. So that's a really good setup for hand cowbell, okay? And then the next way to do it, I'll lift this up so you can see it, is this little device. Now, I'm not sure who makes this because I've had it for so long, but... What it is, it's a metal piece that has a little mallet top on it that's riveted in. And it basically just makes it possible for you to play these smaller bells, like the cha-cha bells, with your hand. Of course, that's a bongo bell on there, but it's small enough to play with a cha-cha bell, you see. Which you can't do really well with this other one because it's so long. Okay, you can try and you can figure something out maybe, but this is easier. So this is indispensable for playing shows when you can't, you know, if you're playing hand drums and you can't put sticks down, 
um, right away you can just, you know, All right, so I totally recommend having that at your disposal. Now, the old-fashioned way to mount cowbells was with this thing, okay? And they still make these, and these were for a wood block and a cowbell. If you've seen any old pictures of, you know, old, old setups, Radio Kings or things like that, they probably had something like this. So cowbell would mount there, and with a clamp, obviously, and then the wood block would mount here. So that's another option, all right? Good, so we'll be right back uh, with some small bells. So here are some small bells. Uh, I have a number of these. And I use these on the drum set quite often. They fit into tight spaces. They're great for any kind of show sound effect. It's always better to use a higher pitch bell for the shows, you know, Broadway shows, even symphony stuff, because it cuts through a little better. Uh, I have several types here. Uh, Besides the cowbell that I showed you that was ancient, I have this very old Ludwig from the 1950s. So that's a pretty ringy cowbell. Now you'll notice some residue on here. Uh, I tape my bells quite often, so uh, that's something you might or might not want to do. But a lot of times when I'm doing recording, they'll ring pretty bad and kind of disturb things. Uh, it's not like you don't want to tape up your drums. I play those wide open. But for bells, that can bleed into everything else. And the problem is they have a pitch. So if they're ringing at a pitch, they can be, you know, pretty dissonant with everything else. So you want to reach for some duct tape. Now, the duct tape to use is some gaffer's tape. In other words, this is tape that people uh, who work for shows and stuff use because it does not leave residue unless you leave it on there for years and years. I did not know that years ago, so I put regular duct tape on here and you see what it did to that. So if you tape the bell, you can just tape it right on the mouth. And again, it's the shape of the cowbell, it's not gonna be perfect, okay? But I'm not that um, worried about the way it looks, I just care how it sounds. So now you'll hear how much drier that is. Now this is a good bell to use for kind of old, kind of Dixieland stuff. It doesn't have, um, you know, it's not very modern. As compared with a modern JCR cha-cha bell, it has about twice the volume and twice the character. Okay, so. Versus. There's no comparison. But if you want that old sound, you should probably get an old cowbell. The other old one I have, which is very old, is this, uh, it's, it's called a Zill Bell. Uh, I know it was made in the United States because it says, and I put this on there to muffle it, that's some moleskin. Uh, I use this with my foot, so. And it's really ringing now because sometimes I put a, a cloth in there to muffle it. So when you're playing cowbell with your foot, you want to use one of these pedals. That's a Gajite pedal. Uh, several companies make them. And this is the um, LP version. They're all pretty good. I like this version. It's pretty sturdy. It's got some very sharp uh, legs there. And you can turn those around if you don't want to ruin a wood floor. So that's nice. All right. Then for all your cowbells that don't have a mount built in. So like that's a built-in mount. Now you can see that. This is the mount that you would need for those cowbells. So basically, it goes over that straight mount, like so, and then the rod goes right there. Okay? So if you were going to mount it on here, you do it like this. And then you just tighten it up. Now you really got to tighten it, okay? Like a lot. So you can use a wrench. Um, a pair of pliers works better. And then tighten it up, okay? And that's what you got. And then I kind of muffle this down. It works great. I use it on my right foot. Uh, as well as sometimes I'll use a, a JCR bell that's even lower. I think I showed that to you earlier. So these are my foot bells, okay? So I definitely suggest getting these. Uh, by the way, you can also mount wood blocks and tambourines on them. Uh, maraca, they have a maraca pedal. They even have a kielbasa pedal now that Mino makes. 
that's great. So basically you can do anything with, you want now with, with your feet. All right, so that's how that works. So, so okay. Then we have the um, LP cha-cha bells, which are kind of the uh, industry standard. Those don't need any tape because they're just dry out of the box. Okay, so there's a black one and a silver one. I think they still make the silver ones. I really like these silver ones. Again, not as good as the JCR. It doesn't have as pure tone, but it's not bad. Okay, and the other JCR cha cha bell I have is right here. Doesn't sound very good because of the other bells, but. All right, so th those are similar. And these little black cowbells, they're called um, cha-cha bells. This is an old, old LP and it's so much lower than the rest. I use this a lot because it's kind of in the middle of a bigger bell and a smaller bell. That's a good one. But most of them, they sound exactly the same. So just like we were talking about before, you can buy these two LP bells and get the same sound, okay? So it'd be nice to have a silver cha-cha bell, which is gonna be open and more ringy, and then a drier black cha-cha bell. Then we have these clave bells that LP also makes. I sound like I'm an LP guy, but I'm not, not an endorser. But they just make good stuff, so you know, there you go. So this is a clave bell. That's great. I use it on my left foot and a lot of times on my timbali setup. You can't break it, all right? I've never broken one of these, and I've played them a lot. Uh, I used to use a wood block, but I'd go through those in a gig. I'd break a wood block. So this is the way to go. It's piercing. It cuts through, and you don't have to worry about breaking it. And then there's two sizes, maybe more. It's ones I have. So the blue one's higher and smaller. The red one's lower. Okay? And they sound great together, by the way. Didn't mean it like that. All right, and then, then we have the Engelhart small bells. I love these, but they are gonna be expensive, okay? So this is the second smallest. I think Gunbops is doing these now, so he probably has a deal with them. Now, I have broken one of these once. Uh, I just got a little carried away, using it as a clave bell with my foot, my left foot. And I broke it, and I never did that again with my, with using these bells because they're very expensive and they're beautiful. So you don't want to break them. He makes great stuff. So that's the high one, I think, and I think this is the next one. Well, actually, they're exactly the same. So there you go. That's why I was confused. So I got two of them. All right, and then we have the low one. It's okay, it's kind of like um, almost uh, a cha-cha bell and almost a timbali bell, somewhere in between. Not quite sure where I'd use this, but probably with these two. And while we're on the subject, let me show you another Engelhart bell. Okay, so I showed you guys this in my um, effects videos, but if you didn't watch those, it's a hecko hecko, a spell... Uh, Rico, Rico, R-I-C-O, R-I-C-O. This is a, a Brazilian instrument, so. But that instrument doesn't have all the stuff this has. This has the springs, it has the clamp. It's pretty cool. So with the springs. It's a really cool instrument. You can even play it like this. All these metal pieces. So it's, it's, it's a nice effect. All right. I like it. Good. So I think that does it for the small bells. Uh, next clip will be on multi bells, a go go's. So here we have some multi bell setups better known as gange in Africa or agogo bells in Brazil. Uh, there's several different kinds of setups like this you can get. You can see here, 
that this is a five bell toka setup. All right, similar to Amglocken in a way. The most common is the original LP Agogo Bell. These are super old. I've had these since I was a kid. And they sound like this. So I'm sure you've all heard that sound on the pop hits of the 70s and 80s. Okay? Uh, here's another set of LPs more modern. So they really changed them over the years. You can see those are higher. Uh, to me, they don't have as much personality. The old ones versus the new ones. Okay, they're both good, it's just different. So you might want to try to try to find a set of the old ones. Now these are mounted, uh, this is an old mount, these are mounted with this uh, apparatus here, the clamps there, and then you just clamp it if you need to, if you're not holding it, okay? This is the more modern version of it. It's actually heavier duty. I was looking for these the other day when I did the vibro slap video and it ended up they were on here so that's why I couldn't find them all right so the modern apparatus is better it's stronger and it's more adjustable so that's what you want to look for the modern agogo bell apparatus now the I have some really small ones these are made by Meinl and these are good because you can close them But they're so small and so high that they're probably only suitable for the studio because you'd never hear them. All right. Now, one of my favorite uh, Agogo setups is this, this tri-bell. And they, they're sitting inside each other, which is super handy because you can play them um, very easily. Like. They don't take up a lot of space. They sound great. So I think these are made by Afro, if they're still made. I love this. Okay. Then uh, a, a real set of uh, Go-Go's from Brazil looks like that. Okay. So I got these in Brazil. And these uh, also you can do that with. So. A little bit noisy when you clap them like that. If you have to, you can move up like that. So you just move your hand up. So these are great. They are almost impossible to mount. I've tried. And they'll break easy. So these are only for handheld use. All right. Then we have these Engelart bells. Again, everything uh, that guy makes is great. And they have a really good mounting system. The welds are strong, and I like these a lot. Play them like this. Different sound, very earthy. All that stuff, all this stuff is. So those are a go go bells. Now the African version, I do have several, but they're at the college right now, and we're locked out of the college because of the pandemic. So unfortunately, uh, I couldn't have those here. But if you go online and you look up uh, Gange, it's uh, G O N, uh, I think G U E. That's how you spell it with a little accent on the E, and you'll see pictures of them. They're very raw looking. They almost look like they're they're made, you know, by an iron worker, like right there. So they're not as slick looking as these, you know, they don't have a finish. And, but they sound great, though. So, and again, they're difficult to mount, too. So most of those are just handheld uh, 
for, for handheld play. So I think that does it for cowbells. As always, please uh, email me with any of your questions uh, and take care.